And this is the first video I've ever done with another person. <laughs> hey! So, we just, uh, at the time of this video, we just got confirmation that both of us successfully completed our thesis dissertations. So we are officially master's graduates. Yes. But um, I was going to film a video of myself just talking about like my master's and like what got me into it and you know why I did it, and my bachelor's. But um, I figured, you know, for the best experience for newcomers, why don't we get as many opinions as possible? And this guy just happened to stop by the office. So <laughs> why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Stephen Platt. Um, I came to Clemson two years ago just for the master's. I did my undergrad in, uh, undergraduate in Greenville at Bob Jones University just in basic engineering. I fell in love with it, um, specifically computer engineering. But at, un at, at my undergrad, it was more just a concentration in programming computer in and computers. So it's like, hey, I want a little more specifically in embedded, engi embedded circuits. That's what, um, embedded systems, that's what got me into okay, maybe I should look a little deeper in this. So, came to Clemson, and I've gotten a little bit of everything across, not not engineering, but now just a little bit of everything across the entire computer engineering, and it's been, it's been a joy. I, uh, I did my bachelor's at Clemson, as well. um, actually just the whole entire bachelor's at Clemson, so I just went straight from Clemson to, uh, to Clemson graduate program. Um, I think I originally started my bachelor's just because my high school classes got me really interested into technology. Uh, I knew I didn't want to be a programmer, but I was interested in some of the areas of hardware. I didn't know exactly what that looked like. Uh, but through my bachelor's, you know, I got my um, undergraduate courses that were teaching me about, you know, basic fundamental concepts. And I think it was when I was a junior is really when I kind of got into IC design, chip design. I was really interested in the Verilog code. Uh, and then I realized that I needed to do a master's to kind of emphasize myself a little bit more because bachelor's doesn't really prepare you for going into ASIC design or anything like that. Um, so I needed that specialty that would come with a master's degree, that little emphasis in doing a, a thesis and some research on it that would actually show like, hey, I actually can, can do this and, and can contribute to this kind of topic. So that's what got me into it. And I did an internship last summer where I went up to Silicon Valley and I designed chips, so, as you guys probably remember from some of my vlogs. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, it was... Uh, it was pretty good. It was a pretty good experience, and then I think uh, we both got some jobs lined up that we're excited about. Yeah. So that's gonna be gonna be cool. Um, a couple of the questions that I've heard that people kind of wanted to know is like, how how did your study style kind of evolve as you went through like from your bachelor's to your master's? Like, how did you oh how did your approach to studying and preparing kind of differ? And like, how is it different from like high school? Less intentional late nights. Um, I, I became more of a morning person um, when doing doing grad work here, um, as opposed to undergrad. Although in undergrad I was an RA, I was going to stay up late anyway. <laughs> so, um, but m more on becoming an early bird. Um, also attempt and like the earlier you can start on this, the better. Avoid procrastination like the plague. Um, and the, bet, the, the more you work at it, the better you, you become. And I think we're all still working at it. Um, but that's been another thing that I've learned from this. Um, the last thing about kind of how grad work changed was I, when I entered grad or master's work at, here at Clemson, I was just a non-thesis. And I was taking classes, and classes are my comfort food. I can take classes and understand the material. But I had at least three good professors in my life just approach me and say, hey, Stephen, do, don't be dumb. Take, do, do a thesis. Uh, the, the research is, will grow you much more than any class will. And the, the amount of work that has gone into making this thesis work, it's, it's amazing. I've grown a lot from this. It's a lot of um, self-motivating and a lot of um, understanding the problem that you have on your own. I mean, you've got support, which is great. Dr. Calhoun has been amazing. But you have to do it. And you have to be able to demonstrate that you can problem solve, understand what the problem is, describe it, brainstorm, get solutions, get results the whole shebang and, and write it, like all of it. And so it's, it's been a, a very good growing experience. Yeah, I, um, the reason why I was thesis, I didn't originally want to do it because at first 
I was skeptical of whether thesis or non-thesis actually mattered in terms of employment because I knew I was never going to get a PhD. That's just not for me. I can't dedicate that much of my life to school. <laughs> Ten years here, no. Um, but um, a professor actually reached out to me, our, our same research advisor, he reached out to me and uh, offered me a research position um, in chip design uh, that we actually would have gotten my whole school paid for. So a free master's, you know, for doing some research, that, that's fine. But as I kind of went through it and as I kind of learned more about it and what I was doing, I realized like, oh, it's actually like a novel contribution that nobody else has done and I'm kind of, you know, blazing a trail here. When it comes to future employment, that actually looks really good because this is your own project. It's not just taking a bunch of classes that thousands of other people have taken. So I think kind of closer to the end, I had a better appreciation for it too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I uh, I don't regret it. I mean, it was a lot of work. It was probably the hardest thing I've ever done, but it was it was pretty cool. I'll second that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was hard. But I think um, in terms of studying, what I quickly learned was build a study group. Yes. I don't think I could have gotten through my bachelor's, maybe my master's because it wasn't as bad, but bachelor's, I could not have gotten through it without a study group. Mm. You got to build up friends in your major. You got to like come to the library at night. You got to like hit the books and keep each other accountable. I think is a big one. Like yeah. we have been in this office together a lot when we were writing our papers, our like thesis papers, just to kind of help keep each other on track. And like we'd go out to dinner and take walks around here. Like I, with Mac, I took walks with him around nice. a lot, like just to help keep each other focused and not like go into madness. So yeah, that was pretty good. Um, yeah, and you know, if you do ever want to like, if you have like a midlife crisis and you want to come back and get your PhD, I think a thesis does a good job of leaving the door open it for the you. Door open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have not having a, it, 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 it's possible. It's just a little harder to. Yeah. Pull it. Um. So that's kind of like why we got through, why why we chose to do the masters and kind of how we got here. Um. One question that I saw that some people were curious about was, uh. What about like your approach to like your interests? Like, what about what you're interested in has changed since you like came in as a freshman up until now? So for me, that would be seven years. I think for you, it would be six. Uh, Something like boy. that. Um, That's a long time for us. I'll preface this by saying my first exposure to actual programming was my freshman year of college. I. You didn't program before that? I did not program. You didn't program in high school? No. Oh, shit. That's <laughs> awful. <laughs> no. Ooh. Although, I will say, there were a lot of experiences in high school that I had that I, looking back, they were programming experiences. Lego Mindstorms. Huge. Um, my math teacher had a, a deal with us where he's like, hey, your calculators are amazing. They can actually be programmed. I'm not going to say... I'm not going to ban you from doing that. In fact, if you write the program for the calculator, you can use it on the test. That's cool. So I did that. That's um, cool. Um, there are other things like WarriorWare DIY uh, on the DS. Of, of all things. It's like things that can get you understanding general programming. But when I came to undergrad, that's when I took my first Python class. It's like, okay, I'm in computers. Here we go. Python's a good way to start off, I guess. Yeah. But, like, you know, nowadays, like, they have all these, like, Mario games where, like, if you, like, run and then jump up and hit a block, it actually generates, like, the, the um, Java code for that and stuff like that. Like, they have so many of these, like, cool, like, kids games <laughs> that show you, like, the basics of programming mm -hmm. and then, like, how, like, ones and zeros work, like, that computer yeah. logic stuff. They have so many of that for kids nowadays. It's so easy for kids to get into it. Yeah. We didn't have that. <laughs> we had Legos. <laughs> you know, it wasn't that. It wasn't that easy. Legos were great. Yeah. But um, so how how have things changed from that point up until now? Like, have I mean, obviously you've gotten your skills sharpened, but has your the exposure of what's out there? Okay. Um, like, what well, in undergrad I had done some some things with Arduinos. I had done some FPGA work. Um, I had um, a little bit of networking, um, a little bit of robotics, a lot of robotics actually. There were some summer programs where we used ROS, uh, robotic operating system for a autonomous golf cart. Um, but it's more just an exposure of what more is out there. Like I had never really heard of HPC, um, high performance computing, let alone HPC data compression, which is what my, my thesis is in. Um, also, like AI, I've taken three AI classes here, 
Um, while that might not be my cup of tea, I now know how to implement it and kind of what to look at when kind of building AI models. Um, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I took two AI classes for my graduate degree. AI is really hard. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's not just programming, it's not just math. There's like some black magic to it too. Ooh. But I think kind of like, that kind of brings up a good point of how like, you know, no engineer, how, no matter how smart you are, no one can know everything about everything. I think that's a pretty fair statement. Yeah, that's, that's fair. But, you know, I'm a hardware guy, you're more software. More of a software guy, but both of us, like, neither of us are AI experts. No. But knowing what we know, I think, gives us a greater appreciation for what they do, and it's going to help us collaborate with AI guys in our future careers. Mm -hmm. I think, like, having understanding for, you know, even if it's not an expert level, having a basic understanding helps you be on a team with people who are in those different areas. So like when I meet software guys like programmers, like CS majors, and they know a little bit about hardware, that makes it a lot easier for us to like mm -hmm. have a conversation. So I think that's great. Yeah, yeah no, I think for me, um, I, when I came in as a freshman, I didn't know, I knew I wanted to do something hardware related. I wasn't sure what that was. Was it PCB design? Was it chip design? You know, was it uh, embedded systems and microcontrollers? I didn't know. Uh, closer to junior and senior year, I knew, I kind of settled on like chips and ICs and ASICs um, and then like FPGA prototyping. And then I think after my internship that actually showed me what that physical design role looks like, I think it kind of made me realize that, you know, it's still kind of one component of a larger system. And I think it made me interested more on like a system integration level. So like not just making one particular widget, but also like how do they all kind of bundle into one big system, so to speak. So like, you know, you, you got chips, right? That's one part of it. You got your ICs, that's, that's one part of it, but you also got to put them onto a board. You got to put that board into a chassis. That chassis has to be EMI resistant, vibration resistant, all that stuff. So, you know, you got to work with a bunch of different people on that. And I think kind of that whole like, where these different areas kind of commingle is where I was really kind of interested in, by at least right now. So that's it. That's that's cool, and I'm excited to do that in my in my future job. I think that's going to be cool. So yeah. Um. Yeah. So I guess that's a little bit about kind of how uh, our perceptions have changed since we've started and gone through this journey. Um. How about one? I guess a couple other things is. We'll do um, things that you, no one tells you about masters that wasn't expected, and then like tips that you'll have. So let's just start with unexpected stuff, like what you weren't expecting. I think the unexpected thing for me is is something that everybody tells you when you go into a masters, and it's a, it's more, it's 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 your work. It's less we're we're doing a class and we're it's gonna be. I, yeah, you got your project, but it's more like you you are told up front that it's going to be all like a lot more self motivated, a lot more of your work. Um, the unexpected thing is just how much, to what extent that is. So it's not like it was unexpected, but it was unexpected how much it is <laughs> that way. Yeah, like you know, it's it's your research, but what you don't realize is like. There's no instruction manual to yep. tell you this is wrong. Yes. There's no like, you know, test bank where you can see what the right answer is. Mm -hmm. You have to figure it out. Yes. You have to debug it. You have to come up with a solution. That's a lot of pressure, and it's really frustrating when you run into like a like a dead end, mm -hmm. and it's like I gotta rework this now. That can be frustrating. And specifically with research, I'm very thankful for our advisor, Dr. Calhoun, because he he knew, or he has known knew when to answer our questions and also when to just leave us on red and let us deal with it. It often, was a pain at the time. Often to an infuriating degree. I, I will say having having him sometimes not answer the question was even more valuable than having it just given to you on a silver platter. I, I agree. I agree. Although it was frustrating at times. Yes. <laughs> I think what surprised me, kind of, I mean, obviously what, what he said I agree with, and, and I gave my, my take on it, but what surprised me was just how, like, the classes are so informal. Because, like, for thesis credit, I think we have to take, is it 21? 24? I think it's 24. 24 credit hours, I think, because that's what, eight classes? 
That sounds right. 24 classes. Let's just say 24 I did classes. 27. <laughs> Let's just say 24. That's eight <laughs> classes. And, like, when you get to the graduate level, they're so, like, informal. Like, they don't give a shit about attendance. I never got attendance taken for any of mine. And yeah. then, like, lectures optional. So, like, I didn't even go in, like, half the time. And then, like, the, the idea is, like, you come up, like, for all these classes, you come up with your own project. So, yeah. one of my AI classes, um, and I actually kind of, I did a similar thing. I kind of repurposed a lot of it for my, my math class um, that was, like, machine learning based is, uh, like, an AI chess game where I used this, like, really advanced, like, chess uh, API. I forget what it's called. Was it Razor? I forget what it's called. Something like that. Um, but it's a really advanced like chess API, and I, I basically created like an AI uh, chess player, which was pretty cool, and it incorporated a lot of the, the elements. But being able to be more like hands on and actually make something that reinforces the concepts that you learn, rather than just like reading books and taking tests, I think was really cool because I'm not a good test taker. <laughs> I hate taking tests so much. You can tell that we're very different. That was the other way we're, around. That yeah, he's the opposite. <laughs> we're very, we're two very different sides of the engineering student I suppose and then like um, I guess like to kind of end it off is like what if there's I guess we can answer this in two parts kind of as a more of a general one and then more specifically but like for tips that you would have for other students so like students that are number one going to come into engineering and do like their bachelor's just like they're, they're, they're thinking about in high school trying to, they're like, I might want to be an engineer one day, and not maybe just ECE, but like engineering in general. Tips for them in terms of like getting into it, what to expect, and then like if we have specifically ECE guys who want to go into a master's program, tips that we'd have for them. So I guess we could answer that in like two parts. Mm -hmm. Let's start with like the more like general one, I guess. Okay, um, curiosity. That's it. Done. You gotta, I, we, you gotta elaborate, Stephen. You gotta video. elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, keep asking questions. Um, go down to like the the why of things. Why do, why do things work? Um, how can we improve this? What uh, what could well what could be improved? How can we improve this? Um, explore. Um, explore the hardware. I'm, I'm hoping to build a computer at some point because as a computer engineer I've never actually built a desktop computer. This feels like an atrocity, but keep exploring. Be creative. Um, I'll be putting a list together for him to build. <laughs> Maybe we can film it. Who knows? That'd be fun. We'll see. If we have time. Yeah. Um, explore Explore areas that aren't necessarily, like, in exactly your area of interest. Uh, I'll, I'll preface this by saying, like, when I, was, when I was an undergrad, it was a general engineering. So I, I did um, statics. I did statics and strengths of materials. I did um, um, electromagnetics. Uh, that, well, that's in, along our lines. Um, I did a bunch of programming. I worked with... Um, a bunch of businessmen and bio, uh, bio people to work on a soil sensor f measuring CO2. That was a really good eye-opening experience for just the, like understanding how things work, not necessarily my small little niche, but getting a big picture. I think keeping the big picture is important. Um, so explore other areas. Um, be curious everywhere. But especially the, the niche. But explore everywhere. Yeah. Um, I ask a lot of questions because I really like to understand things, so I think that's important. Um, for just getting started, uh, kind of to kind of branch off of that is be a sponge. Um, okay. When I was in, I told you kind of when I got my start was in my high school computer classes. You know, where I did a lot of my learning those days was my uh, teacher's office hours where he would just... Uh, have like open office hours you could go into in, in high school like after school was over that's where I learned a lot about stuff that he wasn't teaching and just about like how stuff works in general like we never even had a class where you actually got to like build or take apart a computer to look at its different parts but when I went to him after your class he had an, like an old machine that he let me play around with and that's where I got to see like oh this is RAM this is a CPU this is how they all like connect to each other this is how you you know insert these different like 
you know, PCI cards or whatever the case is, that was really valuable for me. So um, look for expertise and just absorb all of that you can. Um, and, you know, be curious and do research. Like, I'm, I, we're both getting our master's and we still, like, learn every day, right? Like, yeah. I'm always looking up, like, I think that just the other day I was looking up, like, SPI versus I2C yeah. protocols because I didn't know, like, mm -hmm. what use cases you would have for d depending on the two of those or, like, um, um, I'm trying to think of another one, like, uh, some of the different aspects of chip design that I wasn't sure of yet like how that works um, like lithography steps or things like that so there's just a lot to learn and and you know you can even like we're examples of going through after seven years going through a master's program writing thesis papers doing research we still don't know a lot so <laughs> don't feel intimidated um, I would also say like you know don't don't be reckless but take risks that's probably one of the best pieces of advice <laughs> I ever got when I worked at Cadence yeah. last summer, the CEO told me that. Yeah. Don't be reckless, but take risks. Take, yeah. Risks um, especially risks. when you're early on in your career, like you can aff you can afford to do that. So yeah. take an internship. Uh, get some work experience when you can. Um, it's going to help you like differentiate yourself and be you know stand out from the crowd, which is pretty cool. Internships are huge. Yeah, internships are big, and in co-ops too, yeah. which are like internships. Uh, yeah, and then um, obviously like for, for when you actually get to college. Um, I can't emphasize it enough. Make a make a friend group, make a study group, because yeah. you you have to have a network, because it's not something you can do alone. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to collaborate, and then yeah. So like now, let's focus it on like ECE guys that want to get a master's. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but seriously, I think a lot. One of the big questions is like. How do I know if I need a master's or not? So, like, I guess we can okay. talk about that, like, personally. So, like, I mentioned earlier, like, for me, I wanted to do CHIPS. CHIPS is an area where they really want graduate degrees. I think it's CHIPS, AI, and renewable energy. They really like master's and PhDs in those three areas just because they're very advanced and they need a lot of, like, advanced understanding. And then having, like, published work in that area kind of shows that you have advanced understanding. And it's not just, like, bachelor's is going to be very general, and they want you to be a little bit more specialized. So uh, I just, I knew that I probably needed to get an, uh, an advanced degree because of the area that I was in. Um, so that's that's how I decided. How about you? Mm -hmm. There has always been a part of me that would love to teach at some point. And really? So, yeah. I don't think I ever knew that. You did not know this? You'd make a good teacher, though. Well... There's a reason I'm a DCDTA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Digital wish, computer design. It's I, known as one of the one of the rougher labs. It's in where the it's where we learn uh, VHDL. We don't teach Verilog, but we learn VHDL. That's where we learn that class, and it's considered one of the hardest classes in the major. I loved it. That's what got me into chips because hey. we were cool. I wish he was my TA. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Brad was cool, but yeah, you you would have been fun. But um. If if you're ever, if if it's even just like hey maybe I'd like to teach at some point, um, a master's degree is essential. Um, from from there, like a PhD, will like PhD candidates are the main people they're looked for. But there are also programs I know here at Clemson they do hire professors who have just a master's but have a lot of job experience, industry um, experience, lot of industry, um, and so. Currently, that's the route I'm planning on taking, if I ever consider teaching. Um, but I'm ready to get out. Um, Change if, the scenery. Yes. If you are interested in getting a master's, my number one recommendation would be find a professor that you kind of like their research work and get involved in something like, I mean, they have uh, creative inquiry groups here for undergrads where they come alongside a professor and the professor just gives them research-related tasks. Uh, that's huge. And I think that's very helpful to kind of scoping out is a master's is master's research something I would like to do. I'd highly recommend that. It's kind of an internship for research. Yeah, I th that actually is a good point because if you come into a master's and you've never before even done like an independent project by yourself, it's going to be kind of a culture shock. I think mm -hmm. you're going to want to have like some experience of like doing your own project, getting your own work done, because when you're a master's or, or you know PhD, you're doing you're flying solo, so you gotta make sure that you can keep yourself like on track and, and, and know how to actually fix problems as they arise. So I think that's a good point. Um, yeah, 
I, um, I, I don't know. I think senior design kind of, I'm just thinking out loud right here in my train of thought. My, I think senior design pretty kind of uh, prepped me for that a little bit, but um, yeah, I, it was probably, that, that was probably one of the biggest culture shocks for me was just like, I am alone on this. No, there's no like, you can't go to tutoring for <laughs> doing a thesis project, you know? That's kind of, that's Fair. a big thing. Yeah, and uh, oh yeah, they're gonna try to get you, if you're a master's, they're gonna try to get you to stay for PhD because they get a lot of money for PhD students. Uh, make sure that that's something that you wanna do. Don't feel like you're gonna be pressured into it because it's a huge commitment. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, um, and then I guess the last kind of thing is like, what are you excited about for the future? Oh boy. Um, I interned with Aeronix. They do embedded hardware and software last summer, um, and they offered me a job for this summer, so I'll be in Greenville. And I'm really looking forward to just, when, when I am there, I am working on it. And when I am not, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready for that kind of lifestyle thing where it's it's like I'm no longer thinking about research all the time. Um, I'm also excited for just the, the peers. I've, I know this crew, like, it's a small crew, but I've interned with them, and I know all of them. <laughs> uh, in fact, I really like their um, potential employee retention policy of inviting the potential employee to literally all of their parties. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to Top Golf. I was at a retirement party. I was at a new office party. Before and, you even got the offer? Um, right before I got the That's offer. That's nice. Yeah. That's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, hey, the, uh, it's, it's a good crew. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to living around my family and friends from Clemson and from undergrad. I, just right around the same area. So yeah. we'll be in we'll touch. We'll see what the next steps are. Yeah. I'm very thankful for um, how, how the Lord has led up to this point. Yeah. I, um, I accepted a job that's going to put me down in Florida. Not necessarily a chip design job, but more of a system integration role. So very excited for that. I'm excited to be around like other experienced engineers. Uh, there's going to be a lot of like interdisciplinary work. So I'm going to have to work with industrial engineers, mechanical engineers, uh, software engineers. It's going to be like a very kind of all-encompassing thing so I'm glad that it's not just gonna be like one very narrow band for a long time I actually get to do a lot of stuff and have my hands in a lot of different parts of a project that's gonna be cool getting able to being able to learn from a lot of different areas and learn from some like actual like, experienced engineers who have been in industry not just like academia because a lot of our professors have never worked in industry before yeah. that's a that's another thing a lot of your professors aren't even going to like work in this area, they're just going to get, like, they, they just do acad academics, which there's nothing wrong with that, but yeah. having someone with industry experience is going to be cool to be kind of like a mentor. Uh, and then, of course, you know, living on the coast of Florida, <laughs> working in tech, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> that's, that's, I'll, t I'll take it. That ain't rough. <laughs> no income tax, too. That's pretty nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited, and I think that uh, the future looks bright. There's going to be a lot of opportunities there. You know, I mean, obviously, this is going to be a good job, but... Aerospace is huge in Florida, so that's going to be kind of cool if if that's something that interests me down the line. And yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited to get started. But it was definitely a big big journey, and um, I just <laughs> I was thinking about it the other day. Like I don't really think I had a view of what this was going to look like when I came in as a freshman. I don't think I was thinking about like what my career was going to be. I had an idea when I was a senior. I had an idea, like working for Vidi NVIDIA, making like their GPUs, working on like physical design for them. But now that I think of it, like, I don't know. Now that I know how that works, <laughs> it might be kind of it like... scared them away. It might be kind of a soul-crushing <laughs> thing. But like, if you told me that this is what I would be doing like six years ago when I first started, I don't know if I would have believed it. But I'm very thankful for it. Mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it worked out really good. And I think uh, Clemson prepared us for, for what we need to know. So yeah, um, yeah, I'm I'm excited. It's gonna be good. Anything that you have to add that you haven't like mentioned yet? Be thankful for be thankful for the people in your lives. Um, our advisor's been very helpful. My advisors from undergrad, 
very, very helpful in, in kind of answering questions along the way and um, be thankful for the people. Yeah. And peers. Yeah. Peers are people and, too. And peers. Peers are people too. They help you preserve. Remember your peers. They help you preserve your sanity. <laughs> so, that's that's good. I wish Mac was here. Oh, if Mac my. was if Mac here for this video. Here. <laughs> it'd be like the perfect video, but yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um so yeah, I hope that that kind of gives y'all an idea. That's just kind of how we got to where we are and our experiences and hopefully, you know, it's going to be helpful even if you're you're going to get started on your bachelor's journey, you're considering coming in here to engineering or you're considering getting a master's to get a little bit more advanced. Hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of what we went through and how we went through the process and what our mentality was and how it changed. So yeah, hopefully it helps somebody. I don't know. I just, I got some requests for this video and uh, I guess this was the best approach. So, Great. Yeah. But yeah, um, definitely leave us some comments down below and uh, we'll answer them on I might text you if you if anyone has anything specific of you. Perfect. You can. I'll have to make sure I'm actually followed on YouTube. Yeah, you need to, <laughs> you need to subscribe to me. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no. Um, we thank y'all for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.